You'll excuse me if I sound a little nervous, Senators. You asked me about Zenobia, and I... Oh, sorry, I switched off the mic. Uh, I've never addressed a U.S. Senate subcommittee before. You, you, yeah. <coughs> you asked me about Zenobia. Well, let me warn you, a lot of my testimony will sound pretty strange. But if it'll help you decide how to vote on the smith Plumline bill, well, I'm prepared to sit here all week and tell you everything about that amazing year our daughter lived with us before she... If you're ever in central Pennsylvania, Senators, you drop by our farm and pick up some produce, okay? Asparagus in the spring, raspberries in the summer, apples in the fall, and Christmas trees in winter. That's us. <laughs> and the Bassett puppies appear the whole year round. Now, oh, Polly and me, we've been trying to have another child for the longest time. Carrying on like a couple from one of those triple X movies they keep behind the beaded curtain at Eddie's video. Though, though you've probably never been to Eddie's. <laughs> but then Dr. Borealis prescribed progesterone suppositories, and that seemed to do the trick. Come right in, Polly. You too, Ben. Lie down right here, Polly. That's right. Flat on your back. My wife's a little nervous, Doc. When we had Jason, I was only 27, and Dr. Ambrose said an amniocentesis wasn't necessary. Never hurts to be cautious. Now, Polly, I'm going to smear this goop on the ultrasound mic, and then I put the mic on your belly. Might feel a little... Feels weird, Doc. And I move the mic right about here. Is that our baby? Sure is. That's our baby, Ben. Turn up the volume. Oh, it sounds healthy, doesn't it? A good, strong beat. Now I slide the mic around and throw a sonogram up on the screen. Okay, we've got something. Show me the TV. Ah, uh, just let me, let me focus it. I want to see. I can't seem to get a sharp image. Uh, How is she? Uh, he? Kind of round. Is that normal, Doc? Well, maybe if I... Press a little harder. Round, Ben? Did you say round? Sort of like a grapefruit. Maybe a softball, Doc? Round. Now, uh, don't fret, Polly. Uh, you either, Ben. If it is a tumor, it's probably a fibroid. Uh, if it's something else, um, a different sort of fetus, well, either way, I, I, I want to draw some fluid. Maybe the lab can give us an angle on this. So the doc gave Polly a local and inserted his syringe, and the TV showed the needle poking around near our fetus like a dipstick somebody was trying to get back into a crankcase. He went ahead like it was a normal amnio, gently pricking the sack, though I could tell he hadn't made peace with the situation, and I was feeling pretty miserable myself. On the way home in the car, Polly and I were silent at first, but that didn't last. We had some serious talking to do. My aunt had a fibroid tumor. She was fine after they cut it out. Or it could be... Something else, the doc said. A different sort of fetus. There's a riddle growing inside me, Ben. I'm not too happy about it. Later that month, I was out in the orchard picking some Priscilla's. Well, that's a kind of apple. When our first kid, Jason, 12 years old, is moody age, he comes running over and he says... Dad! Coming, Jason. I told him Mom's taking a nap. Being knocked up sure makes you tired, huh? Doc, it's me. So, so what the heck kind of pregnancy is this, anyway? Can you do some of that in utero surgery and fix things? Uh, first of all, Ben, Polly's CA-125 reading is only nine, so it's probably not a malignancy. Oh, thank God! And according to the amnio, the chromosome count is perfectly normal. Normal? That's great! 46 on the money. The strange thing is that she has chromosomes at all. She? Our fetus is a she? I'd like to do some more sonograms. It's a she. That's right, Ben. Two X chromosomes. Zenobia. Huh? Well, if we got a girl, we're going to name her Zenobia. Uh, that's a pretty name. Let's get, say, a, a dozen more pictures, and, and then you can make your decision. As you can see, we did some digital enhancement and colorization on the new sonograms. The sphericity 
That we expected. What's surprising is, uh, I, I guess you'd call it her complexion. Uh, look here. Goodness, it's like one of those Earth shots the astronauts send back when they're headed for the moon. Here's a kind of ocean, and this, this thing seems to be a continent. What's this? Ice cap on the southern pole. I can do the procedure next Thursday. Procedure? Polly, Ben, the simple fact is I cannot encourage you to bring this pregnancy to term. I thought the amnio was normal. Try to understand. This tissue cannot accurately be called a fetus. Forty-six chromosomes, you said. What do you call it, Doc? Well, based on the evidence I've collected so far, I'd call it a biosphere. A, a what? Biosphere. You're saying we can't give our baby a good home, is that it? Our other kid's turning out just fine? His project took second prize in the Center County Science Fair, organic control of gypsy moths. You, you, you really imagine giving birth to this material? I do. But it's a biosphere. It's our biosphere. Right, our biosphere. Yeah, no way is it going to fit through the birth canal. So we're looking at a cesarean, huh, Doc? Cesarean, but you're not... It's, it, this is not... It, yeah, yeah, I suppose we're looking at a cesarean. At which point, Dr. Borealis threw up his hands like he was dealing with a couple of roofs. You, you know, people think being a farmer means you're some sort of chucklehead. But I've probably rented more Ingmar Bergman videos than the doc. With subtitles, not dubbed. And that newsletter we publish is a lot more literate than those prenatal care brochures he was always shoveling at us. If any of you senators would like to be on our mailing list... Down to Earth, Volume 6, Number 4. Dear friends, warm weather in March and April has produced an early raspberry season here at Garber Farm. The black caps should begin ripening around June 25th. The red's about July 8th. Speaking of ripening, the results of the amniocentesis were normal. But it still looks like Zenobia will be a very different sort of baby. We've decided to go through with it anyway. Not an easy decision. Not an easy decision. God, yes. So come on down and pick yourself some raspberries. The regular price is $1.50 a pound, but for those of you who jam and freeze, we charge only $1.25 when you harvest more than 10 pounds. The days slogged by. Polly kept swelling up with Zenobia, bigger and bigger, rounder and rounder, and by December she was so big and round she couldn't do anything except grind out the November issue of Down to Earth and waddle around the farm like the Hindenburg looking for New Jersey. Volume 6, Number 5. Dear friends, we'll be open the weekend before Thanksgiving for those of you who want to tag a Christmas tree for later cutting. We have close to 3,000 Scotch pine, Fraser fir, Douglas fir, and blue spruce over five feet tall and some as tall as seven. And, of course, we couldn't have the expectant couple's usual fun of imagining a new baby in the house. Every time I went to the nursery and saw the Cookie Monsters picture on the wall, my throat got tight as a stone. I'll tell you, Senators... Sadness makes a person cry, and so does joy, but confusion can bring tears, too. We cried a lot, Polly and me. We'd crawl into bed and hug each other and cry. Yeah. Doc? Doc, Polly's water just broke. <clears throat> Any contractions? Yeah. How far apart? Seven minutes, I think. Maybe six. That close. This thing's really on its way. We don't call her a thing, Doc. Maybe at the hospital in an hour. By the time we got Jason over to my parents, the contractions were coming only four minutes apart. Except for its being a cesarean this time, and a biosphere, everything happened just like when we had Jason. Racing down to the hospital... Standing around in the lobby while Polly did her Lamaze breathing and the computer checked into our insurance. Putting on our duds, white gown for Polly, green surgical smock for me. Borealis was waiting in the OR, along with another doctor named... Abner Croft, the Croft Epidemiological Institute. Nice to meet you. Abner runs our research annex. Zenobia's birth will be attended by one of America's most brilliant scientists. Uh, Dr. Borealis tells me we're expecting an anomaly. Uh, we don't call her an anomaly, Dr. Croft. The epidural should be taking effect about now. Is the doc right, honey? I'm numb as a brick, Ben. You must be the father. Uh, ben Garber, uh, of Garber Farm. I'm Pam Pratt, the pediatric nurse. 
Best place for you would be over here by your wife's head. Asparagus in the spring, raspberries in the summer, apples in the fall, and Christmas trees in the winter. Uh, nice to meet you, Pam. And basset puppies, too, right? My kids want one, but I don't think I can handle the mess. Guaranteed to love the children, chase rabbits out of the garden, and always appear burdened by troubles greater than yours. Oh, good heavens, the doctor started already. One serious incision does the trick. If this is too much, Mr. Garber, you can slip out now and... No, I'm fine. It's Polly I'm worried about. I can't feel a thing, Ben. Give me a hand, Abner. That's the strangest looking face. On the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> She's here, Polly. Our baby's here. Good Is that her? Is that her crying? She's here. I didn't even have to whack her bottom. She doesn't have a bottom. She's a ball. She's a friggin' ball. A Rand McNally glow. A biosphere, Dr. Croft. Remarkable. Now I'll just cut the cord. Absolutely remarkable. And pass the biosphere to Pam. Clean her up, Pam. Where? You must be kidding. All the usual. It's not a baby. Clean her up. I don't believe this. She has a good, strong cry. Doesn't she, Doc? Uh-huh. And plenty of gravity. Look how her oceans stay put instead of spilling onto the floor. You got that weight for us yet, Pam? Yeah, I do. Well, what is it? Nine pounds, six ounces. I want to hold her. Now measure her, Pam. This is ridiculous. Put the tape around her uh, equator. She looks kind of blue. That's probably normal, all those oceans. I want to hold my baby. Circumference? Twenty-three and a half inches. Now, give her to Polly. I know the receiving blanket should be pink, but all we have is this yellow one. Oh, she's beautiful. I think she's hungry. You're not going to. Of course I am. I'll just hold her by these peninsulas, and I'll press her north pole against my... <gasps> Yo! <laughs> That's cold. What? She's taking the milk? feels just the way Jason did, only colder. She's actually taking it? Of course. Oh, honey, she's wonderful. She's glowing, Ben. Such a sweet smell. Ozone, I'd say. Look through the gaps in her clouds. Oh, what lovely mountains you have, Zenobia. And such lush valleys. And gorgeous deserts. And radiant lakes. And golden rivers. The most complex planetary model I've ever seen in my life. Thinking back, I'm awfully glad I took Zenobia home with me that night. Sticking her in the hospital nursery would have been a total disaster with every gossip monger and freak seeker in the county crowding around like she was a two-headed calf at the Grange Fair. Besides, those five days Zenobia and I spent together while Polly mended from the surgery... Those days were vital to our father-daughter bond. I've got such rosy memories, Senators. Sitting in the rocker holding Zenobia, my body wrapped in a canvas tarp so her oceans wouldn't soak my shirt, inserting the baby bottle in her North Pole and watching the formula drain into her axis. At night, I always fed her on the back porch. The stars seemed to calm her down. Dear friends, we are pleased to announce the birth of our daughter, Zenobia, a biosphere, on March 27th, 9 pounds, 6 ounces, 23 and a half inches. Spring has arrived, too, and that means pick your own asparagus here at Garber Farm, just $1.50 a pound. Remember, we add the rotenone only after the harvest is over, so there's no pesticide residue on the spears themselves. My parents, God bless them, pretended not to notice Zenobia was the way she was. Mom made her a patchwork comforter, a different animal on every square. A is for albatross. A is for albatross. Look, Zenobia. B is for baboon. C is for camel. D is for donkey. And Dad, well, he kept insisting that when his granddaughter got older, he'd take her fishing on Collier Lake, stringing her line from the peak of her highest mountain. Now, according to all the child-rearing books, Jason was too old for sibling rivalry. But no such luck, Senators. I'm thinking, for example, of the time Jason pried up one of Zenobia's glaciers with a shoehorn. Hmm, here's a good one. Jason, don't! And used it to cool his root beer. 
and the time he polluted her Arctic Ocean with three-in-one lubricating oil. Zenobia, today we're going to play Super Tanker. Jason, stop that! And the time he shaved off her largest pine barn with a big disposable razor. What do you think you're doing? She looks better this way. All right. No TV for a week. I hate her. I hate her. I hate her. Dear friends, our pick-your-own-asparagus season is at an end. We want to thank all of you who came out and learned how to snap asparagus, sometimes in the cold, sometimes in the rain. We also want to thank you for the many, many cards of congratulations. Zenobia's been a joy and a treasure. Noisy, though. Sharp, jagged whales come bursting out of her fault lines like volcanic debris. Honey, we have a colicky biosphere. On some nights, she gets so fussy. Our only choice is to have Ben's parents babysit Jason while we take Zenobia on a long, long ride in the Subaru. Ugh, it finally worked. She's asleep? Blissed out. Such a happy biosphere. Such a happy biosphere. Let's go to Mount Skyhook. On a clear night like this, the view is spectacular. See what I mean? We've got the whole universe right in front of us. Set Zenobia over there, Ben, so she can see everything. Zenobia, this is the Milky Way. Hey, a shooting star! And another. Another? Fantastic! Beautiful. Zowie! Zenobia? Was that you? A shooting star is really just a meteoroid, isn't it, Daddy? She can talk. The body hits the air and turns to fire. Why didn't you tell us you could talk? When talking starts, things get complicated. I prefer simplicity. Oh, but I love it up here. So many stars. They're pulling at me. Know what I mean, Mommy? Well, no. You can talk. Pulling? Zenobia, you're floating. Like a helium balloon. And rotating. Be careful, darling. You might fall into the sky. I'll be careful, Mommy. The stars want me. We want you. The galaxy, it's a lonely place, full of orphans. But the lucky ones like me, they find homes. We're the lucky ones. I get so scared sometimes. Scared? I think about that Bible story you read me. Moses' parents, Amram and Jacobed, how they took their baby and set him adrift on the Nile. It was so necessary. We'll never set you adrift. So necessary. So terribly necessary. How's the biosphere? Full of surprises. Circumference? 33 inches. Van, you remember Dr. Croft, don't you? From the Caesarean? He's wondering whether he might stop by and have another look at Zenobia. He wants to examine her? It's time for a six-month checkup. He won't hurt her, will he? She's very sensitive. No, he just wants to look, that's all. Could we pay you a visit tomorrow morning? Well, I suppose... Great, Ben. So long. Bye. Who is that, Daddy? Your obstetrician. He's coming over tomorrow with a scientist who's very curious about you. It, it would probably be best if you didn't... Didn't let him know I can talk? I'll make him think I'm just a big dumb rock. A rock? No, he'll probably decide you're the most, most important, important discovery since the Taung skull. No doubt about it, Mr. Garber. You think... What's the Taung skull? The uh, Taung skull is the first fossil evidence of Australopithecus africanus. Cool. The Taung fossil was a baby girl, just like your uh, sister. According to the theory of transcendental mutation, a human gestated biosphere was bound to appear sooner or later. Uh, we'd love her even if she wasn't transcendent. There's an equation for it. Abner's published four articles on transcendental mutation in Epidemiology Review. Our subscription ran out. Ben. Polly, I really admire the way you've kept the National Enquirer and those other leeches out of the picture. You could have made a ton of money with this story. 
So now I slip this medicine dropper into Zenobia's largest ocean and suck up a laboratory sample. Also need a pinch, just a pinch of desert there and a cutting from the rainforest. Be gentle. Is that a paint scraper? I need a bit of this archipelago. Don't! D- D- Dr. Croft wants to make sure she's not hosting any lethal pathogens. Pathogens? She's never even had roseola. Hey, hey, not even that. cradle cat. There, she didn't mind at all. And now... That's the biggest syringe I ever saw. Yeah, I'm going to insert it into this volcanic island like so and extract some magma. <laughs> oh, no, now you did make her cry. Finally, I need... No more samples, Dr. Croft. I only want... Enough! As you wish. Thank you, Mr. Garber and Mrs. Garber. Epidemiology will always be in your debt. Now that such an important scientist had taken an interest in our biosphere, Jason's attitude began to change. Zenobia was no longer just his grotesque little sister. Suddenly, she was his hobby. All he wanted for Christmas was a Johnny Genius microscope set and some theatrical floodlights. And we soon found out why. Mom, Dad, come to the nursery. I've got something to show you. Be right there. Coming, Jason. This is incredible. Oh. Oh. He fixed up her crib like a science lab. Those floodlights say they might be too hot for her. No problem, Daddy. In fact, they're accelerating my photosynthesis. Look through the microscope, Mom. I've got it pointed at her coastal waters. Tell me what you think of those. Well, I'll just focus and... Huh. Creatures, Ben. Creatures? Zenobia has fish. Oh, let me see. Oh, oh, wow. Fish. They're gorgeous. Thank you. Over 600 species so far. Maybe we should tell Dr. Croft about this. I don't think that's a very good idea. Some miracles are best kept in the family. All through the winter, Jason made observations. For instance, he noticed that when Polly and I got mad at each other and fell into a cold silence, Zenobia's glaciers would begin migrating south. When our money troubles started depressing us, a dark cloud would cover Zenobia for hours. Angry words got our oceans bubbling. For Zenobia's sake, we all tried to be as nice to each other as possible. Mom, Dad, come quick! She's got amphibians! Oh, goodness! There must be a million frogs down there. Closer to two million, actually. And when amphibians come, it's only a matter of time before... They're here! The dinosaurs are here! Astounding! Take a look, Ben. I see a, a, a triceratops. She's going through a Cretaceous phase. I spotted tyrannosaurs chasing their prey. Duckbill's wading through swamps. Hey, there's one of those winged dinosaurs. Uh, uh, pterodactyls, right? No, pteranodons, Daddy. And they aren't dinosaurs. They're flying reptiles. Pterosaurs. Pterosaurs. Paleontology is in the details. Whether our baby's life forms emerged spontaneously or whether something supernatural was at work, well, Senators, that's not a question I'm prepared to answer. Either way, it was an exciting development. But some of Jason's discoveries weren't so exciting. In fact, they were distressing as hell. I'm worried about her, Mom. The pH of her precipitation is 4.2 when it should be 5.6. What are you talking about? I'm talking about acid rain, Mom. I'm talking about Zenobia's legs becoming as dead as the moon. How could that be? Who's creating the acid rain? She doesn't have people. I know, Mom, but we do. Earth does. Oh. That's not all. I'm recording 20% less phytoplankton in her oceans than last week. It's like there was a hole in her ozone layer. Is there? Not in her ozone layer. I get you. If this keeps up, I'm afraid she's going to get sick. So you see, Senators, where most parents only have to worry about ear infections and chicken pox, we had acid rain and ozone depletion. Then came the tragedy. Fourth of July. We'd invited some families over for a potluck supper. At one point, a bunch of little kids, five- and six-year-olds, wandered into the nursery. They thought Zenobia was some sort of toy. So they picked her up and took her to the dog pen. Mom! What? Emergency, Mom! Emergency! Coming, Jason! Zenobia! 
What happened? Those rotten little kids, they threw her in the dog pen. In the dog pen? They thought she was a soccer ball. I'm coming, darling. Like meteor craters. My southern continent. Fractured, yes. In two places. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're gone. Yes, darling. The dogs are gone. No, my dinosaurs. Your dinosaurs? They're gone. I can't feel my hadrosaurs. Where are my hadrosaurs? Oh, darling. My tyrannosaurs. My triceratops. Oh no. I I want them back. I want my dinosaurs back. Jason carried Zenobia to the nursery and put her under the microscope. Her swamps were empty. Her savannas were barren. An extinction, Senators, no doubt about it. And what's more, when Jason did a complete exam, he found that his sister's pollution problems were multiplying. We decided to be honest with her. We'll be honest, Zenobia. Your clouds are full of greenhouse gases. Methane, carbon dioxide, chlorofluorocarbons. That would explain my coastal flooding, wouldn't it? Yeah. And your phytoplankton levels are half what they should be. And your pH is down to 3.8. I'm pretty sick, aren't I? There, there, darling. I miss my dinosaurs, Mommy. I miss them so much. There, there. Hello? Mr. Garber? Abner Croft, the epidemiologist. I'm wondering if Dr. Borealis and I might drop by tonight, uh, say, after dinner. I don't know. There's been an extinction in the family. I have, uh, what? I, I have an exciting proposal for you. Proposal? Uh, it's rather complicated. Well, all right. Come on over. I'm not a religious man. Like I said on the phone, Mr. Garber, I'm not a religious man, but I can't help believing your little Zenobia here has been, well, sent. We feel that Providence has dropped her in our lap. She was dropped in Polly's oh, lap. Oh, my lap and Ben's. You know how in the old days coal miners used to take a canary down with them into the shaft? Well, when the canary squawked and ran around and then keeled over, the men knew poison gas was leaking into the mine. I've heard of that. Yeah, smart boy. Well, folks, I'd say your Zenobia is exactly that sort of canary. She's a biosphere. Dr. Croft's been on the phone to Washington all week, and they finally made an offer. Tell him, Abner. The U.S. Department of the Interior is about to grant me half a million dollars so my institute can acquire this little canary. What are you talking about? Buying your biosphere for half a million dollars. Buying her? She's the planetary model Abner's been looking for, Ben. Better than the most sophisticated 3D computer simulation. After introducing various agents into the model's atmosphere, mercury, chlorine, methane, carbon dioxide, the Croft Institute will be able to construct complete and convincing scenarios for environmental collapse. Mercury, chlorine, are you joking? It's time you gentlemen were toddling along home. Zenobia's not for sale. Yeah, we're patriotic Americans, but nobody's going to put chemicals in our daughter's atmosphere. Not even the President of the United States himself. Hey, I hate to play hardball with you nice folks. But the test results are in, and the fact is, this biosphere contains a rare form of the simian T lymphotrophic retrovirus. The fact is, the fact is, Dr. Croft, our baby couldn't give my great aunt Jennifer a head cold. Am I right, Dr. Borealis? Well, now that's difficult. Look, to... see this paper? It's a warrant from the Center County Health Commissioner authorizing me to appropriate this globe and quarantine it. You're harboring a Class M biohazard. Ben, hand Dr. Croft his hat. We have a barn full of dogs. Mean ones. All I have to do is pick up my cell phone, call the sheriff's office, and in one hour, a dozen armed men will be at your door. An hour, huh? Then we'd better get cracking. Polly, kids, we're going for a car ride. Good idea, dear. Excellent plan, Daddy. Hey, did she say that? Good grief, she can talk. You bet I can talk, Doc. She talks. Well, whether she talks or not, she's still a Class M biohazard. No, get out of my house, both of you. Get out. Out. A Class M biohazard. Scoop up the baby, Polly. Zenobia, it's time to go look at the stars. 
There's no other way, sis. I know. I know. Your pH is down to 3.1. True. True. Well, I guess we haven't been to Mount Skyhook since... Since the night you learned I could talk. You told us the galaxy was full of orphans. Okay. Everybody out. Unbuckle your sister's son. Jason, I'll take Zenobia. Here. I wonder how many stars you can see on a night like this. About 6,000. Of course, some of them are planets. Hand me our daughter, Polly. Let me finish combing her jungles. Mommy, give me to Daddy. Okay, here. Here. I hate this. I just hate it. It's necessary. I said we'd never set you adrift, and now... Moses' parents, Amram and Yalkabed, they did the right thing. Look, there's Orion. And Cassiopeia. Is that the Big Dipper? You bet, Mom. So that must be Polaris. Let's just get this over with, okay? They're pulling at me, Daddy. The stars are pulling. I can feel it. I want to kiss her goodbye. Me too. I think she's crying. That riverbed used to be dry. All you have to do is throw me, Daddy. Ready, everybody? No. No. Ready. One... Two. I love you, Zenobia. I love you so much. Three. There she goes. Goodbye, Zenobia. I'm sure you're going to miss you. I love you. Bye-bye, Zenobia. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye, Zenobia. Bye-bye, she kept calling out of the darkness. Bye-bye. The earth turned once, twice. Asparagus, raspberries, apples, Christmas trees, puppies. By staying busy, we stayed sane. And then one afternoon, Jason ran up to me holding a video cassette. He'd been watching a tape he'd made of his favorite program, Galaxy Squad. And suddenly, well, well let me play it for you, Senators. Just, just look at that big monitor. Okay, roll it. Hi, Jason. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Mommy. It's me, Zenobia. I'm transmitting my voice directly to your satellite dish. I picked Galaxy Squad because I knew Jason would be watching. I finally found a really good star to orbit, 11 light years from Earth. In my winter, I can see your sun. Your system is part of a constellation that looks like an albatross. A is for albatross. Remember? A few years ago, some mammals emerged from the remnants of the Bassetown catastrophe. And then, last month, I acquired people. That's right, people. Gosh, but they're clever. Incandescent lighting, microwave ovens, personal computers, automobiles, all of it. I like them. They're smarter than the dinosaurs, and they have a certain spirituality. In short, they're almost worthy of being what they are. Your grandchildren. Every day, my people observe your planet through their space telescopes. Thanks to you, dear brother, I can tell them what they're seeing. Acid rain, ozone depletion, the greenhouse effect. Lucky for them, lucky for me. They've started taking my warnings to heart. Study hard, Jason. You'll be a great scientist someday. I hope everybody down on Garber Farm is doing well, even the dogs. I love you all so much. Goodbye. Okay, stop the tape. Thank you. Uh, naturally, Jason was pleased to learn he'd saved his sister's life. It's funny, isn't it, Mom? Dr. Croft wanted Zenobia to become the Earth's canary, and instead the Earth became her canary. I'm impressed she got her people to listen. When I grow up, I'm going to get people to listen. So that's our story, Senators. And now, you must make up your minds. Battery-powered automobiles. 
greenhouse gas reduction, forest conservation. That all makes sense to me. Dear friends, at last Ben has finished talking to that Senate subcommittee. It went pretty well, and now the whole Congress is debating the Smith Blumline bill. You know what Senator Tate said after Ben finished testifying? He said, Sometimes all you need is a pertinent parable. Sometimes all you need is the right metaphor. The Earth is not our mother, he said. Quite the opposite. It's September already, and we're open for pick your own apples every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, provided there's ripe fruit on the trees. We are now harvesting primas, a dual purpose apple great for pies and sauce as well as fresh eating. Beautiful night, huh, dear? I'd enjoy it more if I didn't have morning sickness. It was the same with Jason and Zenobia, wasn't it? You always got morning sickness at night. <laughs> Go figure. You're right, Ben. It's a beautiful night. There's a game I like to play. I focus on a particular star and I pretend it's the one Zenobia picked. I imagine her in orbit, circling, circling. The Earth is not our mother. Quite the opposite. Hey, he's moving around. I can feel him moving. You don't suppose it's another biosphere, do you? So far, it's simply a regular baby boy. But the stars are pulling at him, right? No, dear. He's just kicking. He's just alive and kicking. 